Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this stylish graphical countdown. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this is about more than just the design itself. There is a very useful animation technique that we're going to be looking at that I think you're going to find really quite interesting and helpful. So anyway, let's take a closer look. So for this project, I'm going with 1920-1080, a duration of 10 seconds and a frame rate of 24 frames a second. I can never please anybody with my frame rates, so I'm going to please myself anyway. The next thing I'm going to do is come over to the library generators, text generators, and I'm going to grab numbers, bring that in. I'm using this nice font called Druk Wide. I'm going to go for 750 for the size, center it up here, negative 250 for the baseline, which you can see centers it up. So that's a third of 750. What I'm going to do then is come over to the generator. I'm going to set the start value to nine because this is going to be a countdown and then the end value to zero. And then if we play, I'm sure you're familiar with the fact that this is going to count down every second because we've chosen 10 seconds for our duration. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stylize this text. So I'm going to make a new group, not there, drag it out to the back here. Let's just temporarily turn off our text. Into this group, I am going to put, first of all, a color solid and make that black. Then I'm going to come to the library generators again and drag in a membrane. So I want to set the height and width both to 1920 for this. Then what I want to do is I'll come to the first frame, make sure I'm on the first frame, and I'm just going to scroll in this offset value here till I get a frame I like. I don't want to see any of those kind of twisty overlapping bits. So something like that is going to be good for me. And then I'm going to pick a uh, color. Let's duplicate the membrane. Let's pick a different color. And then let's again just scroll in this offset value till we get something that looks quite good. Maybe that. And let's duplicate it one more time. And let's go for, I don't know, this, I think. And then again, let's scroll in that offset. We can go either direction. Let's go with that. That's good. OK, so then I'm going to crawl this group texture. I might actually also just turn it to fixed resolution and make it square, so 1080 by 1080. So I'm going to turn it off. And then what I'm going to do is I come to my numbers and appearance. And for the face, I want texture. And you've guessed it, I'm going to use the texture group as the source. And then let's turn our numbers back on again. What I didn't do, stupidly enough, was what I meant to do with all of these membranes was just to set their speed down to zero. So just remember to go through and do that because we don't actually want any animation. Well, I don't want any animation. You might decide you do want an animation, but I think this is what I'm going to go with. So let's close down that texture group. Let's select this numbers. And what I'm going to do to create this sort of sweeping searchlight effect is I'm going to use a replicator. So come to object and replicate. So we're going to choose line for the shape. We are going to turn on 3D. We're going to zero out these two X values here. Let's start with, I don't know, 128 points. We will need to crank it up quite a bit when we finish. So then if I open up my endpoint and I scroll in the X there and in the Z, you'll see that we can start to create this sort of extended searchlight effect. So let's just quickly come to the opacity gradient. Click here and click here. And that last one that I've just made, set that opacity down to zero and maybe the, the front opacity down to 10 or something. I don't know. Just so we're getting a bit of a fade. I'm also going to take that numbers and I'm going to clone it and I'm going to drag it out into a new group. So it's sitting on the top. So we will be doing something fancy with this a little bit later on. But for now, I just want to come to filters and stylize and grab a fill. And let's set this to black. So what I want to do with this replicator is I want to swing the end point around in a massive circle, if you can imagine, around the Y axis. So there are a couple of different ways in which I could do that. I could add 
and oscillates to the X and the Z and then offset their phase so it creates a circle. But I want to show you something a bit more interesting. And let's zero out these two values while we're at it. I'm going to make a new group. And into this group, I'm going to add a circle. Remember to hold down the Shift key to make it nice and round like that. Let's center it up. Let's just make it an outline because we don't need to see that. This is just a guide. So what we're going to do is come to geometry and we're going to set the radius for our circle. So that's going to be 4096, I think. Nice big circle. So we want our circle to be lying flat rather than vertical. So we can do that by coming into the rotation and setting that X rotation to negative 90. So what on earth am I doing here? Well, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a dummy object or you probably want to call it a null because you're very fancy. Anyway, I'm going to draw out a basic rectangle like that. I'm going to center it up. Let's make it a very obvious color. And then we are going to take this rectangle. We're going to come to behaviors and basic motion and motion path. For the path shape, we're going to select geometry and we are going to use that big circle that we've made as the source. And while I'm here, I just want to change the direction to reverse. And then I need to change this group here that I've just made to 3D. So now what we've got is a dummy object that we can link to. So I'm going to switch my replicator group also to 3D. I'm going to come back into the replicator, select the X endpoint, and add parameter behavior and link. And let's select the rectangle. And let's choose properties, transform position X. Something's happened already. And then let's come back to the replicator. Let's choose its Z end and add another link to that. Use the rectangle again. Then properties, transform position Z. And now if we play you can see we've got this sweep. Lots of steppiness in there. Don't worry about that. We are going to sort that out. So we can turn off this, this dummy object, this rectangle, turn off that group, in fact. So now we actually have got our effect starting to happen. You can see we are sweeping around. But what I do need to do is come back into this motion path and we need some loops. So we actually need five loops. So now we're getting this and we're getting a complete rotation every two seconds. Let's come back into the replicator. Let's maybe increase those points to 256 for now. Let's also add, just to smooth things out, a directional blur. And let's set the amount to, I don't know, 64. And you can see that's could have helped to smooth it out as well. So then let's come back to our clone here and let's turn off that fill. And what I want to do is I want to set its blend mode to difference. And that's going to make it really interesting, I think. And what I also want to do is just add a color and threshold and then reduce this threshold down until we can start to see something again. So 0.12 on the threshold and 0.34 on the smoothness, maybe. Actually, I'm not sure I like that very much. It's going to take that mix value and just dial it back a bit, I think. Really just playing around here, trying to get a look that I like. So a few things that I want to do as well. I want to kind of create a blip on each start point. And I'm going to do that in two different ways. I'm going to select this replicator and I'm going to come to color and levels. And let's open up the histogram here. Let's open up the RGB. So come to the first frame. Let's set a keyframe for the white in and set that value to 0.1. Let's come to a, a second in on the timeline. Here's another keyframe. Let's come one frame back, so to 23 frames in my case, and set this value to 1. Let's open up the keyframe editor. Let's right click here to bring up this contextual menu. And then let's choose after last keyframe repeat. And you'll probably see from these ghosted values here that we're actually repeating that little grading blip on every second like that. Just helps the numbers change over a bit more smoothly. And another thing I want to do is create a flash in there. So I'm going to close that up. So into this group here, I think, let's close up that texture group. I'm going to add in a generators and lens flare. I want to drop it 
behind the replicator itself. And actually, while I'm here, I'm sure I will forget if I don't do it now, I want to drop in a color solid at the back of everything and I want to make it black. It's uh, because we're using these membranes and so on, it's going to be different if, we d if you don't actually do that. So do that. So this lens flare, let's just crank everything all the way up. Let's go for the maximum size, the maximum intensity. And then what I'm going to do is come to stylize pixelate and I'm going to increase this scale value a lot till we've got a sort of a border to our numbers like that. So 360 is probably quite good. And then I am going to come to my first frame and properties and I am going to set an opacity keyframe. I'm going to step forward one frame and set that opacity down to zero. Let's come forward to one second again. Let's set it up to 100%. Let's step back one frame, set it down to zero. And again, let's do that trick with the keyframe editor. Open that up. Here's our value. And after last keyframe, repeat. So again, you can probably see from those ghosted values, we've got a blip on every start. So then that's going to look like this, which really helps those th that countdown factor, I think. So just a few final thoughts on this. Uh, as I mentioned before, we will need to come back into the replicator and increase the number of points until we get rid of some of that steppiness. And I think if we go for something like 512, we should be fairly good. But I might also come back into my texture group. I want to show you something else you might consider doing. And that's select the group and then come to stylize line screen. And let's set the mix value down to something like 25 and the angle to 90. And now I think those strong graphical lines really help quite a bit. And we could maybe just knock that mix value down a bit, say 10%, adjust that to taste. But I do think it, it adds quite an interesting factor. So I won't waste any more of your time with messing around. I'm sure you've thought of all sorts of ways in which you can customise this to your own taste. Hopefully you've got enough ideas out of this to come up with your own version. And I hope you've picked up some interesting techniques along the way. I think this null trick is actually quite a good one and well worth sort of trying to understand what's going on there because it allowed us to create a circular rotation for that replicator end value just by linking it to this rotating null object. As I said, there was a different way in which we could have done it, but I think this technique is well worth learning. So thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon.